So take a breath and just <clears throat> come on down into all of your body, into the chair. Close your eyes. And just let yourself settle for a moment. And notice as you inhale and exhale that soft rising of your chest. And falling as you exhale. And it brings your attention to the area of your heart, right around where you're breathing. And your breath is soft and expansive. And let yourself breathe in the feeling of peace. And breathe out the feeling of love. Ah. And how that just permeates your whole being because your breath is alive and that peace is alive inside of you and love is alive inside of you. And it fills the room as we each inhale and exhale. And that invisible love, that invisible peace is palpable, it surrounds us. It entangles us in a field, something that we share, something that Cryon shares with us and the entourage as they bring in the love. So let yourself just sink back into the arms of that love. And as you receive the message from Cryon, feel the energy of the message that underlies the words and let it become a part of your breathing in and breathing out. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. So many times we've said this before. If you remain in the box of belief that you were born in, the one that has served you so well to survive in all your life, the one that worked, if you stay there. This is still the man in the chair pretending. And that's the way it's designed. Now listen, it is one of the only attributes on the planet that requires the belief of consciousness within a human to expose something that heretofore was invisible. And it's not with your eyes, it's with that which is the trilogy of your heart, your brain, your pineal, that senses something that is real and is different. I want you to think about this for a minute. We've used the metaphor before. There you are sitting in the box of consciousness, the survival box. It works. First question when you see this is, it's a fake. Second question, why should I do this? I'll simply endure it until it's over. And while you're doing that, and those are your thoughts, there's an entourage, a soup of spiritual entities. If you want to call them singular, go ahead. They're not that look at you, that are around you, that someday physics will actually allow you to see there'll be a field filled with love and caring, with synchronicity, with plans and help. 
and they swirl around you in your empty box. And you sit there all by yourself and you have it all figured out. Your empty box has served you. It is your survival box. Don't touch my box. It's working for me. And I'll tell you this, dear ones, and this is real. And it's important you understand the love of God that is compassionate for you. If that's all you do all your life, there is no judgment. But what is swirling around you is purpose and enhancement, a longer life, a reason for being joy as you walk from A to B. As you walk out of, out of the bedroom every morning, you smile. It's not the start of another mundane day. It's the start of the rest of your life in a celebration of who you are. And most don't have it. How do you like your empty box so far? It has served you because you've survived, because you're strong. And most of the earth walks around in that way. And they'll do it even if they say they're religious. Because they have to, even to survive in the religious system. Where judgment is the way of it. You've got to create a box then that suits the doctrine. But it's still an empty one. You with you, trying to survive whatever you were told. And the principle we give is the principle we always give that some of you have understood and realized, but not completely. I'm going to channel more about this tonight. When you start to expand the box or gasp, destroy the box is when things start to happen. And then you let us in. Did you notice something that has to happen? Your free choice must decide That you're done with the old survival. Take a deep breath. Get out of the box. And instead of destruction, there's going to be enhancement of who you are. Because then you will start to sense the love that God has for you. Whatever you call God, spirit, there is a... a a creative source. It's the closest word you got. For that which is everywhere in the universe, in the galaxy, right here with you. It's so big. And yet it knows your name. You call it an it because you haven't got a word. You don't have a, a non-singular word. This is how structured you are. The very concept of the energy that is around you is not available in any language on the planet. If you call it energy, don't do it. It's love. It has a face. It's a big face. And in that face, if you looked at it really carefully, you're part of it. Your face is there. It's not the face you have on earth. It's the soul face. The collective creative source includes your consciousness. You are part of God. Do you know what happens when you break down that box? You don't gain a, some kind of a parental helper. You expand you. You got to see. You get to see right away the handshake between the creative source and who you are. And then you start to realize you do create your own reality. You do have an influence around you. There have been detractors and those intellectuals who will say, it's ridiculous to think that every single human on earth could create their own reality. Because everybody would then steamroll over everyone else. And this is where we come in and say, this is your three-dimensional perception of what we're talking about. Again, steamroll. You figure it's about force. It's about putting yourself over others, and it isn't. It's about a collective puzzle that coalesces 
beautifully because everybody's involved. Do you know what happens if everyone dropped their box? And the answer would be peace on earth. You fit into a bigger puzzle. You don't steamroll over anyone. You wait for things to happen around you that are purposeful and beautiful and fit into a plan. And you can't see it immediately. It might even be frightening or scary or sorrowful. Until then you realize, oh my goodness, oh my. I see where it's going. I never knew how good it would be. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. We know you. Where you've been, what you've done. There's an entourage waiting, always, to be invited in. And when you're in a place to make that invitation, stand by. You're going to meet yourself. Not going to meet a parent in the sky. This is different. Tonight I'm going to give you a channeling that shows you some things and the way humanity has gone that perhaps you didn't think of before. I'm going to, I'm going to call it listening to the voice of spirit. How we speak to humanity and how you listen. These things are changing. It is the reason I am here. Now I'm going to close now. And here's the question. As you sit there, listening in your home or in this room, as you sit there, be honest. What do you think? Real? Well, not real. If you crossed your arms and said, show me, you're still in your box. If instead you have opened the box and said, Dear Spirit, show me what it is I know need to know, I am willing to step out of it. Then you felt the love of God today. You know there's something there. Where are you? Are you in the empty box? How you doing? Are you surviving just fine? Or is there more? And I'm here to tell you, this is real. And many of you feel this. My partner has stepped aside completely. He is not speaking these words. He does not know what is going to happen when he sits down. He has not got a planned message. He has no idea. All he feels is the love. We put him into a very, very beautiful place. How real is this to you? Could it be that everything you're hearing right now is from a very loving place that knows your name and cares for you and is inviting you to be more part of this new energy and get going, light worker, old soul. You've been here a long time and you know it. This is not the first time around for you, any of you. You think it's an accident you were born at this time or who you are? Or what you might be able to do just by showing your gentleness and kindness to others? Not by giving them a cryon book? <laughs> by becoming the master that you are and how you behave and treat others? That's mastery. It changes the planet, believe me. And the ones who will see it first are your kids. And then they will start emulating. Long after you're gone, they will emulate you and emulate you and you will live on in them because of it. Think of this. I'll be back. And so it is. Let us come from the busy mind into the quiet of the present and take a breath in through the top of your head, all the way down your body into your feet. Big breath in through the nose. And exhale. And let the energy of the day begin to smooth out, to soothe you. Not just as information, not just as energy, but a beautiful balance of both.
spirit and matter dancing together. And then another breath in. And this time, exhale through your heart center. And just feel that energy around your heart, the energy that's been created here today, the softness of it, the love, the information, the family that is here and that exists in love. And as your breath softens and you become more present and ready to receive the message from Cryon, keep that breath in your heart softly, inhaling, exhaling, and letting your body just follow your breath as it relaxes and becomes more and more present in this present place, in this beautiful heart, is where the all that is exists, the I am presence, the presence of the divine, the presence of the entourage, and the love and the honoring that Kryon brings. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. The energy of the day is so different than when my first experience took place with my partner. So much has taken place in a way we expected. My partner teaches about potentials and reality. And when I met him in 1989, the information I presented was as real then as it is now that there would be no nuclear war at the millennium, that there would be a change of consciousness, that the magnetic grid of the planet would move. And now science has established a connection between human consciousness and that very grid. The science has been presented even this day showing that connection. And yet what I present next is the most esoteric thing you can imagine. I'll tell the story about free choice, about where it's taken you, about human consciousness development. It's not complex, but if you just tuned in, it may be a little too strange. Humanity has free choice not just to do what it wishes to do without intervention from spirit, but where it takes itself and its energy and its consciousness and how it works and thinks, either cooperates or doesn't. This is the free choice of humanity. The entire puzzle that is on this planet is not a test of humans. It's a test of energy. You live over and you live over and over and over. Is it possible through so many generations that you would be able to raise yourself from your bootstraps, increase the consciousness of humanity, and graduate into that which is peace on earth and an entire different paradigm of existence? I came in in 1989 because that is the potential. And it's measured by something that I will now speak of. The entire reason that things took place in the 80s the way they did, the wild cards that you saw 
even that which is the fall of the Soviets, all the unexpected things, there are more of them coming. They're a teller, uh, a message of changing times, of an increased consciousness where humanity starts to grow up. To get out of that which I call the playground of consciousness into an elegance of consciousness. One that creates togetherness and peace. As just the beginning of a new kind of human. A new kind of society. But it wasn't always that way. I told you earlier we might, we might title this communication... Hearing the voice of spirit. Hearing the voice of God. It's a metaphor, is it not? People who tune in spiritually don't normally hear a voice from the sky. It's a metaphor. Hearing the voice of spirit is a metaphor for being tuned in to the intuition within your own higher self. So that you could connect with that which is greater than you are. And here, that is, in quotes, the information for you. The information for the planet. The reason it's so hard to hear this, it's a metaphor. Hearing is being intuitive. The whole reason that it's so difficult is because there's a low drone, you might say, a metaphor for, for a noise, a rumble that seems to obfuscate, that is to cover up the messages. It's like trying to hear something while there's a noise. It's the best metaphor we can give. But the noise level is starting to decrease. And what happens when you get a better, clearer message? You change, the world changes, those around you also hear what's going on, even those who don't want to hear it, hear it. The metaphor is hearing. Don't leave this place thinking you're going to hear something with your ears. This is a metaphor. It's about being in tune with the intuition of knowing what's right and what's wrong, what's going on with you, with the enhancement of feeling potentials, all of that is hearing the voice of spirit. Now the hardest thing for us to teach is what my partner has been teaching for some years. The easiest way for you to approach this when he says that, that your DNA is not working at 100%. It is working in the 30 percentage area. In the 30s is where it is. It's not even at half. It's a metaphor. There's no instrument that is going to clamp around your DNA and give it a percentage. But it's the best we can do to tell you where you are at when it comes to the consciousness of humanity. Now, I want to give you some information, just that is of, of interest, how this all started, where it went to. If you had to start a test of consciousness on the planet, it would have to be equal. You have to start with the same amount of light and dark. And we did. We've told you the history of humanity, it's short. With a planet that's been here for 4 billion years and you've been here for 50,000, it's short. Humanity as you know it really only started 200,000 years ago with the seeding process. 100,000 years ago when Lemuria was there. 50,000 years ago when it really was done and the test was working. You're new. You're new. All of known history filled with human beings fighting each other. You knew. 
and now it starts to change. The irony is that those listening to this and some of those in the audience have been there for all of it. <laughs> An old soul. We've given you this ex explanation many times. You, you remember what you think to be Atlantis. You remember what you think to be is this and that. And all of these things in your Akash will pop up. It just means you've been there and done that. You've seen the cataclysms. You've been there when things took place and they're etched into a memory you can't really grasp but it's there what it means is you know you're old maybe you helped start the planet the sisterhood is a great example and those of you who feel inclined to come to the sisterhood even this night a meeting that celebrates the beginning it celebrates a time when women had that which is intuitive, and that is to say they were given the shamanic energies of the planet. Who better to have that than the life givers? It represents a time in the beginning of equality, of a wisdom that was the beginning of the test the DNA at the beginning of the test was set at 30. <laughs> now stand by, because it doesn't sound equal, does it? It quickly went to 35. Quickly. Because that's where it belonged to have full equality over the darkness. Now stay tuned, and what I mean by that is listen up. I'll give you something you should know. This shows you in the numbers the power of light over dark. When you got the 35% of DNA working, it was equal to 65% of darkness. Now, for those of you who don't really understand the numbers, it's not 50-50, but perceptually it was. Power-wise, it was. 35-65. 35 light, 65 dark was equal. It ought to tell you that the dark is weaker than you are. You had less of a percentage of the planet of light, and yet you were equal to a 65% darkness. Light is more powerful. You don't need as much of it to be equal. You started at 30, went to 35 almost instantly. You started to grow up because there was isolation. There wasn't too many of you. There was Lemuria. The Pleiadians were still here teaching you. And that is really where the test started. Now let me tell you something about what happens at 35. There is an intuitive understanding of gender balance on the planet. Who does what and why? It is what is celebrated in the Lemurian Sisterhood. It is a time that the genders respect one another and understand that the feminine gender is the one that is more in touch with spirit. And that little bit of being more in touch is the fact that they give life. And therefore, they are the ones that would be in contact to help guide the societies. As soon as the DNA started to lose percentage, the gender balance was dysfunctional. If you want to have a test of any society anywhere on the planet and you want to know where their DNA is as a society because it's different. What we give you is an average of where your DNA percentage is today, which I'm getting to. But if you went back and wanted to know where it was perhaps in the Middle Ages, or perhaps before, when you went to 25%, if you want to see it, all you have to do 
is look at gender dysfunction. The women went from respect and shamanship to second class, third class, along with the animals. No balance. That's what happens when the percentage starts to dip into survival. Non-elegance, non-appreciation, war, hatred, uncaring, anger. And then it started to go up again. You hit the 30, and then 31. And then the average of 32. Oh, dear ones, there are still those on the planet. There's, there's tremendous gender dysfunction. You haven't returned to this. You're not going to get it again until you hit 35 and 40. And when you do, it's going to be so intuitive. You will look backwards and say, what was wrong with us? That we didn't put those who could do it the best where they belong. When it's a 25 and 30 percent, the strongest win. The ones with the most muscles win. Old, old thinking. Gender disbalance. You want to see a balanced society working at 35 and above? You look at the gender balance. Respect. Appreciation. I'll give you something my partner always talks about. Find the oldest society, the most long-lived culture on the planet. Look at the indigenous and find out what they did. What do the records say? And I'll tell you what the records say. Women were the shamans. Women are the life givers. We say that over and over. They are close, close to spirit. They have a better intuitive ability. Imagine having somebody to be able to guide who can see it and feel it. And the voice of God is clear to them. That's gender balance. The men knew it. The men depended upon it. And the women depended upon the men to do the things that men do best. Gender balance. It's still around in the indigenous who've been around a long time. It never changed. When it got to 32, I spoke to my partner because the snowball was rolling and we had seen it before. This planet was starting to lift itself up on its way to 35, on its way to an equal balance, maybe even 36, where dark would run the other way. Dear ones, if 35 is equal, you've never seen that in your lifetime until right now. You're almost there. Dark is running the other way. It's coming out of the woodwork, as they say. Imagine a dark army who can recruit from your own country those who can only see darkness, who will run to join them in order to be dysfunctional with them. They haven't got a clue. Darkness cannot look up to a higher level. Listen to me. Darkness cannot look up and see light. It only sees the strength of dark. It doesn't understand that it is so defeatable. It doesn't understand it's going to lose. All it can see is itself. That's all it can see. It's so obvious, is it not? What is going on right now in this planet? We said it earlier, right now, as I speak, you have the most dysfunctional politics you've ever had in this country. Ever. And it represents those who are tired of the old and the establishment is no longer wanted or needed. Anything would be better than what you had. 
This is different. And it's because of a continued increase in the percentage of DNA. Those women and men on this planet who would never be in a room like this to hear channeling are feeling it. Integrity. Transparency. The longing for something that works. The longing to know that if you pay taxes, it's going to something that works. The longing to know that if somebody gets elected, they'll have integrity to steer you on a path that helps that which is what you call your country. Integrity in high places instead of dysfunction. A population that is tired of an old energy because they're starting to hear the voice. The voice of spirit is for all humanity and not for a select few. But the select few will understand it better and be able to cling to it and know what it says. But as the noise and the confusion and the drone of darkness starts to become more equal to the light, you can start winning, you can start hearing it. And those who don't hear it or don't what it is or not interested in being in this room, all it is to them is a new beginning, a new awareness. They don't know what they're hearing. They don't know what they're feeling. They just know they want change. The old souls recognize it for what it is and start working with it and know that they can cling to it, get messages from it and guidance from it. That's the difference. But all humanity, all humanity is aware of it, all of it. You're creeping, creeping toward 36. Even with the things that are around you, as you defeat the darkness on this planet, you'll be at 36. Now that means you're winning. It also means the drone that hides the voice of God is going to start diminishing and things start to clear up. Intuition won't come by so fast that you don't know what you heard. Intuition will stick around, will speak to you in a clearer voice. You may even be able to stop it and examine it. The problem with intuition is it's covered by the drone. It's a metaphor. I hope you understand. Covered by the drone means that your intuitive thoughts are so elusive because this underlying energy keeps it from being seen and heard. The logic inside your brain stuffing it down all of the time saying it's not accurate or perhaps it's just you wishful thinking is all part of that which is the percentage of your DNA. And as it starts to creep toward 36, everything changes. The logic of your brain changes because it's in the DNA. There's an awakening, a more efficient DNA. You think differently. All the things that you've been told about in psychology start to morph into something else. Wisdom becomes intuitive, not something that you wish you had. Society starts to change overall in general. Solutions to the unsolvable begin to happen. New thought. Growing up. When you can hear better the voice of spirit. Dear ones, you're at 35. The average. Some on this planet are still at 27. How can you tell? How they treat their women. Gender balance. Now I want to say something so that nobody misunderstands that. There are different doctrines around this planet that are beautiful. With masters who have come from the cultures of the doctrines. Tell about the beauty and the love and the equality of God and the Creator. And all of them preach togetherness. 
And all of them preach one creator. But it's the men and the women who interpret it for their own use who you're looking at. The doctrine may be right on. It's the percentage of wisdom that interprets the doctrine that you're looking at at 27%. The doctrines on this planet almost without question teach the beauty of God. The togetherness. The way you can work together and worship the same God without killing each other. All of them. Even the ones that seem to be at odds with each other. If you study it and you want to see what the masters really said, they said love each other. Love each other first and emulate God. That's what the doctrines of the planet say. You're at 35. There's an equality here. You're starting to see with dark and light, and it's changing everything. You take a look at history, and you've come a long way. It took a long time to get here. Dear ones, we've seen it before. The snowball is rolling. And there isn't anything that's going to stop it. And in its path are all kinds of things it's going to run over. And part of the things it's going to run over are the establishment. <laughs> and if it does not change, I want you to watch for some very big established things to fall over. And the snowball will simply knock them down. Don't be alarmed. Don't think it's the end of the planet. When certain kinds of things happen that would create fear, it's just about being at 35. You're in the right place at the right time. I've said enough. When you walk out of here, I hope you understand this message. Listen to it again if you have to. It's about that which is the light and dark quotient of the planet and you. It's about the fact that you're winning. And that's why I came. Because it's hard to talk to those who are winning when they've never won before and they have a consciousness of loss. That's what you're working on. Stand tall when you leave this place and know who you are. The message of Cryon never changes. It's inside. That's where the creative source is and has always been. And you've got it. 